The first strongest demon that challenged God, which I shall talk about, was so strong that he ambushed and attacked an angel of God on a vital assignment. The angel he waylaid is not a small angel at all. In fact, for having a mind to attack such an angel, I give it to him, he should be the strongest. But you sure know that demons are evil and dreadful, right? Well, according to what they did and the number of times they were referenced in the Bible, we know they have some supernatural powers. The question we however want to answer is, how powerful are these demons? Apart from being so wicked, demons are regarded as a harmful spiritual entity that may cause demonic possession, necessitating an exorcism, in the Abrahamic religions as well as in the ancient Near Eastern religions, including early Judaism and ancient medieval Christian demonology. Large portions of Jewish demonology, which had a significant impact on Christianity and Islam, were brought over to Judaism during the Persian era from a later form of Zoroastrianism. It is interesting to note that the texts of the Old Testament do not contain any references to demons as spirits that are inherently evil. Even though God sends out evil spirits, they hardly qualify as demons because they work for rather than against the Supreme Being. The gods of other nations were combined into a single category of demons, or daimons, with implied negativity when the Hebrew Bible was first translated into Greek. However, demons are mentioned 55 times in the New Testament, 46 of which are in passages about exorcisms or demonic possession. Some older English Bible translations, like the King James Version, translate the word demon as devil because it is not one of their vocabulary words. Demons are not morally dubious spirits. Rather, they are evil and the root of misery, suffering, and death. They are Jesus' enemies. They are not tempters. Rather, they are the origin of physical and mental illnesses, pain, and suffering. Only the devil is permitted to tempt people. But the first strongest I was making reference to was even mentioned in the Old Testament. Although not called a demon, he did great evil and disservice to God and his messenger. Daniel 10 verses 12 to 14. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision is for days yet to come. Yes, the first strongest demon in the Bible was the prince of the kingdom of Persia. This first deadly demon was not called a demon in the Bible because the word demon was not even coined at that time according to Wikipedia. The English use of demon as synonym for devils goes back at least as far as about the year 825. The German word daemon, however, is different from devil, the teufel and demons as evil spirits, and akin to the original meaning of a daemon. What really transpired in the book of Daniel was the fact that the prophet Daniel had been given a worrisome prophecy regarding a major conflict. He decided to go on a three-week period of fasting, prayer, and mourning. God answered Daniel's prayer by dispatching a heavenly messenger to describe the vision. But as he explains to Daniel, the messenger was put off for those same three weeks. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me twenty-one days. When I was imprisoned there with the king of Persia, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. The prince of Persia is often interpreted as a type of territorial or national angel in charge of the state of Persia. Michael is referred to as Israel's prince in verse 1 of chapter 12. While Michael is described as an archangel in 1 Enoch 20 verse 1 to 8 and Jude 9, the concept of local gods, or patron gods of the city-states, may have originated from the notion that each nation had a particular angelic being, presiding over it in the spiritual world. Samuel is described in 3 Enoch 35 verse 12 as the prince of Rome, and Dabiel is described as the prince of Persia. Both of these princes spend each day with Satan, and they write out Israel's sins in order to deliver them to the seraphim. But why do they go by the name seraphim? Because they destroy the satanic tablets. The sins of Israel are written down on tablets and given to the seraphim so 
they can present them to the Holy One, blessed be he, so that he may purge Israel from the world. Every day Satan sits with Samuel, prince of Rome, and Dubiel, prince of Persia. The concept of an angelic prince became a miniature theology of angels during the Second Temple period. Genesis 10 says that there are seventy nations, and again in Exodus 1 verse 5, Abraham had seventy sons. Furthermore, the Masoretic translation of Deuteronomy 32 verse 8 states that God established the boundaries of peoples according to the number of the sons of God, according to the angels of God, as written in the Septuagint. These texts gave rise to the notion that a divine council with up to seventy angels in charge of the various nations exists. A Jewish author wouldn't believe that the gods of the different nations existed, but they wouldn't deny that spiritual beings had an impact on world politics. Sirach 1717, however, states that Israel is the Lord's own portion, despite the fact that the text does not particularly acknowledge angels. He assigned a king for every nation. Is it true that the Bible asserts a divine government, or regional angels are in full control of the various countries? Despite how endearing this tradition may be, it must be emphasized that it was only created during the Second Temple period. If, however, the phrase does not refer to an angelic or demonic being, then does it refer to human political figures? For instance, some scholars contended that Daniel chapter 10 reference to princes actually refers to the Persian and Greek kings. Not a strong angelic being, but Cyrus the Great, or Cambyses is the prince of Persia. Without naming particular Persian or Greek kings, it is possible that the cosmic conflict between the princes of Persia, Greece, and Israel prefigures the earthly conflict between the Persians, Greeks, and Judeans that is described in Daniel 11. So the prince of Persia is definitely not a human, but a spiritual being and principality, and if he is not for God but against God, then he must be for the devil and every form of spiritual being that works for the devil can be conveniently called a demon. The key points of Daniel 10 are that the messenger from God was hampered by the prince of Persia and that for three weeks, the messenger was unable to defeat the prince of Persia. Even then, Michael, the prince of Israel, was necessary to help him succeed. The prince of Persia is, at the very least, a foe of God who, for some unknown reason, seeks to keep Daniel from hearing the message from God. And for this demon to have the guts to challenge an angel of God like Gabriel and withstand him for twenty-one days, he must be very strong and powerful demon. This will take me to the second demon that I believe was or is the strongest in the Bible. For this demon, we will travel into the future and precisely the book of Revelation to meet this demon. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 10 now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Now, in the Old Testament, a large monster, whether in the sea or on land, is frequently referred to by the word tannin, or dragon, Exodus 7 verse 9, but in the New Testament, the word dragon only appears in the book of Revelations 12 verse 3 to 4. And every time the name dragon is mentioned in the book of Revelations, it is to convey information about the devil and his deeds. The dragon in the war in heaven is specifically described in verse 10 while many other beings and revelations have numerous interpretations. The enormous dragon, the prehistoric serpent, is also known as the devil and Satan. The dragon Satan battles the archangel Michael and his angels in the heavenly battle. The length of this conflict is not specified, but verse 8 makes it clear that the dragon lost the battle, and he and his angels were driven out of heaven. So, the second strongest demon is the ancient dragon in the book of Revelation. Whether he is the devil himself or another demon, it doesn't matter, because both Satan and the other fallen angels were made of the same materials. They were all at some time angels before falling out with God and becoming evil ones as the demons we have today. This is the reason the word demons and devils are used interchangeable in many versions of the Bible. 
Thank you for your support.